So here I just want to show you what an entire V8 engine looks like. Uh, this is a V8 engine cutaway. Um, of course, it doesn't operate, it's full of holes, but uh, what we've done is we've actually hooked up the crankshaft to an electric motor, so the whole thing is going to spin just the way a real, um, well, four-stroke, eight-cylinder engine is going to spin, okay? So first, I just want to note the color coding. Um, if it's coated blue, then that's the air intake system. So the air is going to come in through the air filter, through the carburetor, and then be distributed into the intake. Um, the yellow is actually oil, okay? So the oil is actually going to collect in the bottom in the oil pan. We'll see it better from the other side. Um, but then the oil is also going to be routed up through the various moving parts. So it's going to be routed up through uh, the camshaft. You can actually see the camshaft down in there. Um, the oil is also going to go through the valves and the valve train. So, um, you know, these are all color coded yellow because that's oil. Um, green is the cooling water system. So the cooling water actually gets circulated through the engine through this little cooling water pump. Um, here is the thermostat, um, which is going to, you know, open when the water temperature is high enough. Um, and then the water is also going to circulate through the entire engine block. So everything that's color coded green, um, that's all part of what we just call the water jacket. So water is going to pass in and around all the cylinders and all the major components. Okay. And then lastly, um, red is the color coding for the exhaust. So the exhaust is going to come out here. Um, this will be part of the exhaust manifold. And then if we can come around on this side, we'll, we'll get a somewhat better feel. Um, you know, we can actually see uh, the exhaust valves are the red valves. Well, the ones that are color coded red. So of course the exhaust is going to lead the engine cylinders and then again into an exhaust manifold and out into the environment. So the nice thing about this particular engine cutaway is it really shows you all the different parts while they're in motion. Okay. So first we'll start down here at the bottom. This is a, the crankshaft. Okay. Um, note that the crankshaft isn't one solid shaft. It's actually a whole bunch of pieces that are all put together. Um, but these are all part of the crankshaft. These are just counterweights. Um, to counter the weight of the moving pistons. And so this whole thing is the crankshaft. Uh, clearly, these are the pistons. Um, we can also see some of the pins. So I mean, right here, uh, this would be uh, the crank pin. That's where the connecting rod, this is a connecting rod. And that's a connecting rod. So the connecting rod connects between the piston and the crankshaft. And then there's also the wrist pin, which is also called the piston pin. And that's right up in here. Um, you know, this is where the piston actually connects onto the crankshaft. Now, we also have to have some sort of a connection uh, between the crankshaft and the camshaft. Um, so we'll actually get to that in a moment. Um, but first, um, this is the valve train up here. So these are the individual valves. You know, intake valves will be blue, exhaust valves will be red. Um, here's the rocker arm. Um, behind the rocker arm, you can just make out the top of the push rods. And then these are all moved by the motion of the camshaft. So if we kind of come back around over here, um, you know, we can see the camshaft is right up in there. Okay. Um, you can see that directly attached to the camshaft are what are just called lifters and the lifters actually connect to the push rods. So as the camshaft rotates, it's going to push up on the lifters. It's going to push up on the push rods. Um, it's then going to cause rotation on the rocker arms. And that's then going to open and close the valves at the prescribed time. So these camshafts are actually a whole series of cams. Um, this is an eight cylinder engine. This is actually 16 cams. Um, you know, one inlet cam, one exhaust cam for each of the eight cylinders. Um, so again, the camshaft is not like one solid shaft. It's a whole series of pieces that are all put together. Okay. Now the connection between the camshaft and the crankshaft um, is the timing system. So this could be a timing belt. It could be a timing chain. It could be a timing gear. In this particular engine, this is it right here. Um, obviously, this is a timing chain. Okay. So as the engine is spinning, um, the rotation of the crankshaft is going to be transferred to the camshaft. 
and that's how you know the cams are going to move and again operate the valve train and that'll make sure of course that the valves are going to open and close at exactly the right times now we also um, should note the carburetor whoops we know the carburetor already um, so the fuel is going to come in through this line that's color-coded red it's going to go into the carburetor um, there's a butterfly valve here on the carburetor so that's going to allow us to adjust the airflow and in fact the carburetor is actually a mechanical control system right what we don't see is the inside of the carburetor and there will be a series of channels and you know places for the fuel and the air to mix together and then that entire mixture is going to come out through the blue through the intake and in through the intake valves and then also we want to make sure that we take a quick little look over here at the distributor itself now the distributor is going to make one rotation um, for the entire set of eight cylinders being fired okay now since this is a four-stroke engine one rotation of the engine is going to associate with the intake and exhaust processes the other rotation of the engine is going to correspond to the compression and combustion of course and then the power stroke processes so it turns out that the distributor is actually going to spin at really half the speed of the engine in fact we do the same thing on the camshaft it doesn't have to be this way but typically the camshaft is going to make one rotation which will allow each of the valves to open and close at the prescribed time so that's why when we're back on the other side and looking at the timing chain um, we noted that the gear on the camshaft is essentially twice the size of the gear on the camshaft i'm sorry the crankshaft so it actually takes two rotations of the crankshaft to give you one rotation on the camshaft and then the gearing between the camshaft and the distributor uh, that's just a one-to-one -one gear ratio so the camshaft and the distributor are going to spin at the same speed which is half the speed of the actual engine again for a four-stroke engine okay um, then there's some other little things we can look at if we want to i mean uh, this is going to be the oil filter um, down in here is going to be the oil pump um, down at the bottom is what we just call the oil pan so basically oil is going to fill up that space um, every time the crank rotates it's going to actually splash into the oil so that oil comes up and lubricates all the appropriate parts on the crankshaft um, the oil pump is then going to pump the oil also again up into the camshaft and into the valve trains to make sure that everything is lubricated properly over there okay so that's just a brief discussion of the cutaway of the v8 engine um, i mean one thing we could also do which is nice and i'll just have paul kind of come around this side is we could actually go through each of the four strokes um, we can just pick one so let's look at this cylinder right here um, just for illustration um, the cylinder has just moved down that was the intake stroke now it's pushing back up that's the compression stroke note both valves are closed um, now is the power stroke so the combustion process is pushing the piston down and now the exhaust valve is going to open so now we have our exhaust stroke we get to the top the intake valve opens we move down so that's our intake stroke again um, both valves close, compression, um, spark fires, pushes the piston down, power stroke, and now at the end the exhaust valve opens, we push out the exhaust, exhaust closed, opens the intake, and we now draw in the fresh charge of air. Note that it does take a finite amount of time for the valves to open and close. I mean in the ideal world the valves would instantly open and close but that doesn't happen so for instance at the end of the power stroke note that the exhaust valve is already beginning to open um, now we go through the exhaust stroke and at the end of the exhaust stroke the intake valve is actually overlapping a little bit with the exhaust in other words the intake is opening before the exhaust is completely closed now you can see the intake is actually closing a little bit before we've gotten to bottom center um, so this is something to recognize also that nothing happens immediately in an engine like this now certainly you can change the motion characteristics of the valves by making adjustments to the camshaft i mean the camshaft um, and the shape of the lobes on the camshaft is what determines how much these valves open and when they begin to open how long they're open when they begin to close when they're fully closed 
Um, so camshafts can be designed in order to maximize performance. Um, you know, if that's what you're into, if you're trying to maximize power, you may want to, uh, you know, put in a custom camshaft just to give yourself the characteristics that you need for your particular application.